This lesson is on square roots. In a previous lesson, you were given the width of a square and asked to find its area. In this example, you'll be given the area of the square and asked to find its width. One strategy you could use to find the width is to divide the square up into unit squares, which have an area of one, and then count along one of its edges to determine the width. Another strategy you could use is to estimate a value for the width and then square it to see if you come up with the area. In the second square, for example, Let's try a width of 5 and see if we get the correct area. We would square 5, which means 5 times 5, and get an answer of 25, which we can see is too large. If the area turns out to be too large, like it was in this case, then the next guess we would try a smaller value for the width. If the area turned out to be too small, then we would have tried a larger value. Employ one or both of these strategies to determine the width of these four squares. Take a minute to do so. Once again, it is easy to check your answers by simply squaring the widths to see if you come up with the area. Now, the real question becomes, what mathematical operation did we use to come up with these answers. What did we do to 16 to come up with the answer of 4? Or what did we do with 36 to come up with an answer of 6? What is the opposite of squaring a number? It is called taking the square root of a number. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 36 is 6. What would the square root of 25 be? This is expressed mathematically as shown below. That funny symbol in front of the 25 is called a radical sign and is used when you want to find the square root of a number. The 25 would then be referred to as the radicand or the number inside the radical. To find a square root, you think what times itself equals the radicand? Or in this case, what times itself equals 25? The square root of 25 is equal to that value. And that value is 5, because 5 times 5 equals 25. Take time to fill in the table below. Remembering that when you find a square root, you are thinking what times itself equals the radicand, or the number inside the square root. Look carefully at these radicands. You should recognize them. They are all perfect squares. Once you have your answers, it is easy to check them again by simply squaring the answers to see if you come up with the numbers inside the square roots. What taking the square does to a number, taking the square root undoes. When this happens, these are called inverse operations. Taking the square root is the inverse operation to squaring a number. We'll demonstrate with the number 8 below. First, we'll put our 8 into the function machine that squares the number. When 8 is squared, you get a perfect square of 64. Next, we'll put it into our inverse function machine that does the opposite of squaring. It will take the square root of the number. And when we take the square root of 64, we get 8, the number we started with. <music>